Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we will attempt to make an upgrade on the laser cutter because I find it quite annoying that when I have to line up a piece here I get no visual indication of where the beam is going to hit. You can see if we zoom right in here and I fire the laser it hit right there. But I can only tell with certainty that it's within like one square centimeter and if you try to utilize all the material that you got then that's a, a big problem because you might end up using too much material or to cut into something that have already been cut so I've got some of these red laser diodes here and it could be nice if we could get this to to shine a beam of red light at the spot where the laser is going to hit. There is of course a few different ways we could do this and the most uh, straightforward and perhaps the easiest approach would be to make some kind of a bracket to go onto the cutting head here and then mount the laser at an angle that would shine light down onto the workpiece. But the spot from one of these is quite wide and it will also be very easy to knock it out of alignment or something like that. So I think we should go for, for another approach. So a while ago actually I bought one of these zinc selenide uh, beam combiners from eBay. And this type of material has some quite interesting properties actually. It is almost completely transparent to infrared light, whereas uh, visible light and especially red light will be reflected about 50% of it. And you might be able to see if we look through it that it has a bluish green tint to it. And that's because some of the red light is reflected. And if I catch some light up above us, you might be able to see that there is more red reflected back to us. So that's a quite interesting material. There is actually quite a lot of materials that act like this but mostly it is the other way around so that it will be transparent to visible light and it will reflect the either ultraviolet or infrared light. Like your regular glass or acrylic for example, we can easily see through that and it has no color to it meaning that all the visible light can go straight through. But when we try to cut in it with the laser, then the laser beam cannot go through this, so it gets stopped and the material gets hot and that's, that's why it gets cut. So if I mount this at 45 degrees in front of the laser beam, and the laser beam comes to the camera like this, oops, then the laser beam can go straight through the glass or the, the sink solenoid. If we then mount the red laser at the side of the glass here then that light will be reflected and also go towards the camera. So we will combine the beams and we just have to make them line up on top of each other and it shouldn't be that much of a problem really because we can just see when we test fire the laser if we if we hit where we're supposed to and if not then we just have to rotate the the laser here a little bit. So let's do a few tests and see if this actually does what we want it to do. So let's start by testing the red laser diode here just because that would be the easiest. And it runs on 5 volts so I'll just use a lithium ion battery to, to power it up. We don't really need full brightness just for the test. So you can see even if I shine the laser at the paper there we get a little bit of reflection here up on the on the blue. But if I hit the the disc I need a more shallow angle. You can see we get a nice bright spot. It does work quite nice actually, but you can also see down on the paper we get this red halo around the the lens or the glass there. So some of it is definitely going through. And if I just pick it up and you can also see here that it 
it is definitely letting some light through. But we don't really care about that. We care about the reflection. And we are getting one. So that should be a good thing. I am planning on mounting this thing that we're making right at this hole where the laser exits the first mirror in there. When this goes to the home... Oops, it's still on. When this goes to the home position, that will be around here. Then we still got plenty of space to get something in between there. So to start with, I just want to laser cut a piece of acrylic that can hold this in front of the hole there. We will just uh, tape it to the surface here. So we can hold that in front of the hole and then test fire the laser. And then we will be able to see how much power we actually lose by going through this piece of, uh, yeah, it's not glass, but crystal here. I already found a piece of scrap here that we can use. So I'll just cut a rectangle with a circle in it and uh, I hope to make it a press fit. Not that I want to press it but just a loose fit in there and then we could add a little bit of, of regular tape or one side so it will not fall out. I don't really know much about this material so I don't know if it is as strong as glass or if it is brittle or even harder so I don't really want to apply much force to it. Uh, maybe you could, I don't know, but they are quite expensive so I don't want to destroy it. So I moved the laser into position and we'll just cut our piece here. Oh, I could probably have speeded it up a little bit because uh, it is uh, set to cut 4mm and this is only 3mm. So. It won't hurt though, so it'll just take a little longer. And I also really need to upgrade the fan in this. You can see the smoke is, is all over the place. Yep. There we go. It definitely cut through. So. And I screwed up because it goes through the hole, as you can see, but I don't think that will be a problem, we'll just add a little bit of tape to each side. So I think I got a better idea actually. I got some of this uh, foam tape here, and if I just add a piece of paper to the end then it will not get the sticky stuff onto our thing there. So I'll just add one to each side and then hopefully it will not slide out of there. I don't know really. I'll have to see. It it stays in there but and we only need it for like 30 seconds so we'll just stick with this. We will cut another piece of the tape and we will also just use this to fasten this inside the machine. But uh, we will also need to figure out where we need to place it. And uh, don't try this at home, please. Uh, that's better. Oh, there we go. So, it's right there. So the laser hits about 14 millimeters from the from the edge over here. So I'm guessing somewhere around here would do. Maybe.
So that was the quickest waste of money in a long time actually. <laughs> Unless I did something incredibly stupid. But you can see the laser hit out on the uh, edge of this. But about two millimeters from the edge. So if this really was transparent, it, uh, it shouldn't have burned a hole through it. Oops. Well, so maybe I should have noticed this a little bit earlier, but if I hold it right like this, you might be able to see that it is actually just a thick coating on top of a regular piece of glass. That is my guess anyway, now that this is uh, broken. If you look around the edge of this, you should be able to see where the coating ends. And if I turn it around, you can see that the coating is on the other side. So they are just a bunch of assholes, the guys that sold this to me actually, because it was sold for this exact purpose, to use in a laser cutter to combine the beams. But there is no way that is going to happen if if the backing on this is just regular glass because no infrared light at this wavelength will, will go through. You can get 25 watt cutters but but that wouldn't work either. That would also have cracked it. So Unfortunately it's so long ago that I can't really complain about it. <laughs> so that is how you waste 15 bucks in a hurry. And I think we'll have to go back to the method that I explained to begin with. And here is another good shot at it actually. When we look down at the white paper, you can see the, the blue tint is on this side here. You can, you can see the first edge that is clear and then it gets blue. If we turn it around like this, you can see now the blue edge. Is the first one, and we got a clear one over here. Bastards. And yeah, well, maybe I could have avoided cracking it if I had just looked a little bit closer, but I mean, you really expect to get what you pay for, but uh, yeah. Obviously, you don't all the time. So I got an item just like the one I bought here. This one is actually a little bit more expensive, but you can see they have the exact uh, diagram here that I was talking about. And it also says down here that it is used at 45 degrees to transmit the CO2 light and it will reflect the red light. So they'll both get parallel. And by looking at the picture we can also see that it should really be an amber color where this one is just clear. It has a very slight amberish color to it if you get it in the right light but I don't even know if if the uh, outer shell on this one or the coating there if that is the same material as this one but the one I bought had the exact same title as this one that it was a beam combiner for a CNC engraver or laser cutter Maybe I shouldn't have bought the cheapest one. <laughs> I think I paid around 15 to 20 dollars for this one. Uh, and the cheapest one that I can find today that seems to do the job is around 30 dollars. So, Well, someone had had me and I didn't even realize. Until half a year later. Dope. So I think I changed my mind a little bit now. Uh, now that I have to mount this on the head here, I think I'll use these two mounting holes that are there already. Then I'll 3D print some kind of fixture to hold this at the correct angle. Maybe with a set screw or something like that. Then I will focus this laser to get the sharpest point possible. And instead of connecting this to the power supply of the laser cutter, I will mount a coin cell battery on here with a little switch so I can switch it on or off when I need it. That way I don't get any wires to go around inside and get cut by the laser beam or 
tangled up that would just be asking for problems but I won't be using it that much so a coin cell will last for years I think and there's a tiny little resistor on here that I can change uh, currently it's working at 5 volts but I can just change the resistor to make it work at 3 volts instead so that's probably what I'm going to do and I'll just need to approximate the angle that I need here So we'll just uh, oops, put some material in front of the laser here and we'll test fire. So that's right there, that should be easy enough to see. And we'll turn it off so we don't burn ourselves. And I'll need to focus this a little bit better. So this is not that bad actually. The point is very tiny, if you if you can see that. Sorry, I, I can't see the camera right now, but... So, I will need approximately this angle, and I don't know what is that, 10, 12, 15 degrees? No, no way, it's more than that. Actually, let's do something different. And uh, let's start thinking. So let's just get this out of the way. So we'll need the height here, that is uh, 61.4 millimeters. And I'll need something to write with. And that was 61.4. And then we want the laser to sit around here, I think. Wouldn't that be maybe there? And that's 28 millimeters. So now that we got a right angle triangle here and we got the two sides, we can calculate the angle here uh, very easily. And also this angle. And if I remember correctly, that should be the inverse tangent of let's say 28 divided by 61.4 which gives us 24.51 degrees and let me just verify that because uh, I'm not 100% sure that I remember correctly so let's do the other one 64 point oops sorry 61.4 divided by 28 and that gives us 65 degrees and you know this would be more like so and we should have the the shallow angle here and this one should be greater so we know that this angle here is 65 point it's a good idea to have both anyway so now I'll just go and draw something that we can print on the 3D printer and then test fit it on there and see if it works. And I'll just measure from here and out to the mounting hole so that I know how much I need to offset the laser for it to hit the correct spot down there. And I'll make it so that it can be adjusted a little bit. And we will also go ahead and measure the distance between the two holes. And last but not least, we will need the diameter of this as well, 6 millimeters. And we are almost ready to 3D print. It's just heating up the last bit here.
and it looks promising. Sorry, you can't really see much from there, but... And that's also one of the things I want to improve on my 3D printer. That uh, nobody can really see what's getting printed on this one. So that's also why I got the extrude mounted a little bit uh, further down on the one I'm making. And I also want to get this fan here on the back side of the, uh, the slider carriage thing there. But anyway, we will get back when we have gotten a little bit further. And there really isn't much light in there either, so... I'll probably just show you the part when it's done instead of this, because I guess you can't see anything, really. And the part is done, so let's go ahead and grab it. And there we have it. So it's supposed to go like this, and then you can see this hole is at the angle that we want and then I added a hole here so we can put a set screw in here so it will not fall out. And these two will be for mounting this to the printhead of course. So I've got these screws with a tapered head on them and I uh, kind of sunk the holes uh, to make them flush and also to Make sure they will reach all the way through because they are not too long, but this will do just fine. And I will have to go and uh, pass a drill bit through this because it is too tight for this. And while I'm at it, I'll also pass a 4mm tap through this so we can just put a screw in there. So I got the hole tapped there and I drilled this out so now our laser will fit. It won't go all the way down in the hole because the little PCB sticks out there but I won't uh, do anything about that. This will be just fine. It sits nice and firm in there. I don't have quite as much adjustment in here as I would like but then we can just take a file and remove a little bit of material in the middle here if we have to but and uh, when we're done I will probably put some lock washers uh, in between the nut and this piece here but for now we will just do with the nuts So to begin with, I just want to get this focused and I don't really care that much about the alignment. And it's a fair bit off. Looks like we are going this way. So that doesn't look too bad at all. It might be a little blown out on the camera, but the point is actually very sharp uh, when you look at it in real life. So... Now we'll just have to see how lucky we got. I'll move this back over here. And we will... Make a test cut and we will power off the laser.
and it's actually not that bad at all. We are about two millimeters off. And I think when we screw the set screw in, that will actually push it over a little bit. If I just do like this, then we are right in the middle. It is pretty annoying that we get this angle though, so there will be two spots. One on top of the acrylic and then one at the bottom in the, and on the bed there. But that will also reflect up and make another spot on the acrylic, so we actually get three spots. And I'll go grab a screw so we can uh, get this fixed in place. Well, I didn't have any long set screws, so I'll just use one of these uh, regular screws here. And I think we will need to add a bit of super glue to this because there's a lot of play in the frets of the uh, the lens here. Oopsie. stop moving it that would be a good idea okay so it looks like it's right there yeah now I moved it but it is right in this position and uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to glue this without actually gluing it in place also. So, a bit of fret lock there. And we are still hitting it pretty much spot on. I am using the reflection that gets down on the bed here, because that way it will be consistent no matter how thick material I use. It would be better to to be able to see the spot on the top of the material, but I can't do that when I have this angle here. And uh, now we'll just wait for the glue to dry. And the glue is pretty much dry now, so let me just try and line this up with this little uh, slit in the bed here and let me try and fire the laser and we hit it spot on it's the, the bottom hole uh, right there So this is not going to be the perfect solution, but it's definitely better than what I had. Now I can uh, line it up within a couple of millimeters instead. So now I just need to move the blue lead to the other side of that resistor you saw before. And now the coin cell can make it light up. So I knew this coin cell battery holder would come in handy someday. And let's try and install the battery. Oops.
and we're on. Nice. Very nice. So I'll just remove the battery again so we don't short anything out when we install it. Yeah, well, that's that's going to work out. So we'll put the screws back in. Well, I'm pretty sure I bought some lock washers at some point in time, but I can't just. Uh, but I can't seem to find them. So we'll see if if the nuts will do. So, let's see if we hit the right spot there. I'll just uh, try and do the same thing as I did before. And it's maybe off like half a millimeter. I would say that's pretty much spot on right now. So I've got some figure foam tape uh, and I think I will use that for uh, for mounting the coin cell battery holder here. This is some pretty strong stuff so this will not get loose. I'll just wipe this with some alcohol before I mount it and then it will never get loose again. And I thought about doing the same thing for this and then maybe put a zip tie around here if, if it will not stay in position. So, now that's down there pretty tight. And you can see this is some pretty strong stuff, but it is rotating a little bit, but it uh, won't hold the switch. I will need to add a little zip tie to that. So I think I'll move it up here instead. Uh, that would be a little bit easier for me to fasten it down. So I just check the clearance against this, and that's just fine. Right after this stuff. And I'll try some of this green stuff instead here. Uh, I haven't uh, used this for anything practical before actually, so I don't know how strong it is. Well, there you have it. We are pretty much done and uh, it's working. Well, it is a hack job and uh, not really as good as I have hoped. I really would have liked to use that uh, beam combiner, but uh, since we got the wrong one, we can't do that. And this is probably the second best that we could do. And you can see it does clear here by 8 millimeters or centimeter or something like that. So let me try and line this up with the edge this time. So that should be right there. And it's right on. 
well maybe it's like half a millimeter this way now uh, the dot so it will cut like half a millimeter uh, further back but you know I can live with that no problem maybe I can wiggle this a little bit let's try that again it's a little bit better now it's maybe a quarter of a millimeter I should probably turn this off before I start poking around. And these are pretty snug. I'll have to get a little wrench and, and catch the nut on the bottom here. Yeah, that's okay. That's good enough. And you can see the laser beam in the smoke there. That's pretty neat. And now to test this, let's say that I want to cut myself a little square. And I want it as close to this edge and this edge as possible. So we will turn on the light. And I've set the home position uh, for the laser cutter here. And I'll just move the workpiece instead. So this right here should leave us with a couple of millimeters on both sides. Let's see if that works. Oops, I probably need some more power here. Yeah, well, it, it didn't cut through because I didn't set the, the power high enough, but let's try and uh, cut a new one. So this should clear the other one. Well, so at least it does what I wanted it to do. So, uh, yeah, this maybe I can snap this out. So now I can get really close without worrying about cutting into these open areas. Even though I didn't get what I planned for, I still think this is better than not having any indication of where to cut. Even though we got screwed by not having the correct part, we solved the problem anyway. I don't really like the quality of the job here, but uh, I guess I'll get to live with that. And this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and if you like the video please give it the thumbs up. And I will catch you soon for the next one. See ya.